Good morning. Do you have one of these? I'd wager many, or if not most of you do, okay? Then you probably already somewhere in a, like a essential section or someplace, you've probably got an audio recorder. As a matter of fact, you've probably got a very good audio recorder. I think about half of the, the music, uh, rock and roll music recorded in the 1950s uh, had a poorer quality recording than you have on this thing right here. Okay, I just pressed the button there and I got 72 hours of recording that I can do just by pressing that little button. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do something a little, little uh, different. I'm not going to read. Uh, well, I may read a little something, but uh, uh, this afternoon, uh, Constance and I are going to uh, attend the regular uh, uh, sort of the social hour for our, the local uh, OTO group here in Sacramento. They just have a uh, very, very informal get together just so that we can all see each other and and smooth and talk about uh, uh, talk about things. And we do it over at uh, uh, McKinley Park, right over here. They're one of the most beautiful, beautiful little parks. Uh, it has a duck pond, and it has one of the most uh, beautiful, large, and well cared for rose garden in uh, in the state. And it's uh, we usually meet up at the rose garden, and it's it's no big thing, and it's just in the afternoon uh, or. 6.45 to 7.45, that kind of thing. It's just uh, no big thing. Uh, but it got me thinking. Uh, a long time ago, when I, when I wrote uh, uh, the Book of Ordinary Oracles, one of the strange little homemade or oracles that I talked about uh, was the couch potato oracle. Now, that's using the remote on your on your television set, and uh, it's kind of a kind of a goofy thing, but it sometimes it becomes scarily uh, accurate. <laughs> okay, the, the bottom line is you if you really want to know the answer to a question, the 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 answer is screaming. If you really know the question. You really want to know. You want an answer. And you're ready to hear the answer. It's screaming at you from every, every direction. It's all the answer is the announcement of the question. And it's just that we have to be ready to hear it. And the the idea of the couch potato oracles was that you, you get in that mind space of where you really want to know uh, the uh, answer to a question and you uh, turn your television set uh, on and using the remote you uh, put it on mute and, and uh, uh, scroll through the different channels as your eyes are closed and you you ask the question, uh, oh, what do I need to know about the some so and so and so and so? And then you just stop and then take the mute off just for a second. And you'll hear something and then you turn the mute off because you, your brain doesn't need to, to process it. It just needs to hear it. You turn it off and then you process it. Uh, the, the example that I give uh, in the Couch Potato Oracle uh, 
or TV roulette omancy, I call it. Uh, don't be too quick to dismiss the answer as invalid. Take some time to think about it. If you feel you must try it more than once, consider the subsequent answers as a continuation of the conversation. For example, my 90 year old mother was in failing health. This morning I asked, what can I do to make my mother feel better? Three consecutive answers from three different channels counseled me to, quote, bring something to eat, make funny faces. It may embarrass the child, but that's okay. You get the picture. Now, the reason I'm bringing up this uh, uh, little meeting in the, in the park and the reason that I'm talking about this as a tape recorder is that uh, uh, maybe not this afternoon, but uh, uh, sometimes I'd like to, when I'm together with a group like at Monday night class or something like that, uh, I want us to actually hear the spirits talking to us. Now, in particular, we could we could say, uh, and the reason I thought about the the park was, it's the most one of the most beautiful rose gardens on earth, and roses and flowers and fragrance and things like that uh, uh, are uh, under the auspices of the elements of air, the elemental air elements, the sylphs. Now, elemental, the elementals are constantly communicating with us. We, they're, they're all around us. We breathe the sylphs. They're everywhere. We're just not listening. As a matter of fact, we'd go absolutely bonkers if we heard all of the communications that, that's going on. As a matter of fact, one's consciousness would need to be uh, considerably expanded for us to even start to process the information that is coming to us from the, if we choose to call them that, the spiritual forces around us. So I would like to do an experiment and I uh, would like to describe the experiment to you in case you would like to do it. Let's use the, the example of the elements of uh, the sylphs. As a matter of fact, it was uh, the first elemental that Aleister Crowley tried to uh, uh, show to uh, his wife Crowley in, in Cairo. Now, magicians have various ways to attune themselves to specific uh, elements, and there's various ways of doing it. Uh, Crowley, in his uh, uh, attempt to show Rose, his wife, the, uh, the sylphs, had a copy of Eliphas Levy's uh, prayers to the elementals. And uh, so he did the, the, the prayer to, uh, to the sylphs as an invocation just to, to get them in the mood. Uh, more technical magicians know that uh, the uh, Enochian calls, the, the first uh, six Enochian calls uh, in particular, uh, activate the, the elemental spirits of the, of the Tablet of Union and and uh, consequently, the, the entire elemental uh, 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 branch of Enochian magic. 
So an Enochian magician would would say, uh, well, I want to, uh, I want to hear a message from uh, directly. I want to hear it. I just don't want to see it. I want to hear it. Elementals, talk to me. You're talking to me all over the place. Uh, a Nokian magician would do like the the third Enochian call, which opens up the the, the Lion X harp, the air, and the air of air subangle of. Uh, so, if you would say, okay. I'm going to do the prayer to the elemental. I'm going to do some kind of meditative thing. I'm going to read a poem of uh, uh, something that uh, gets me into the air moods. Something that would uh, that would attract, would would complement, would please, that would harmonize with, which would stimulate, which would flatter <laughs> the sylphs. And then turn on my tape recorder and just sit. Maybe three minutes and turn off the tape recorder. Now, if you were in a public place like a park, there'd be perhaps children laughing there would be dogs barking there would be there would be cars going by uh, in the case of mckinley park there'd be ducks and at this time of year little ducklings and geese and goslings and uh, 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 and birds and things like that lots of stuff people talking doesn't matter nothing is interrupting everything is the answer everything is the communication and then listen to it and don't think that you have to have to put it through any kind of uh, 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 heroic audio dissection no it was meant for you to hear if you could hear it this could hear it okay you don't have to uncover it with any uh, uh, technical heroics just listen and if it's if you think it's nothing listen to it a little bit more i think it's at least worth your serious experimentation and that's all i'm gonna that's all i'm gonna say today i'm leaving you with an experiment whether or not we do it this afternoon uh or not i don't know uh so this couch potato oracle, I'll just, uh, it's only like a page here. Ancient books of magic taught medieval wizards how to uh, conjure demons and spirits to do their bidding and grant them their desires. Listed prominently among the spirits advertised talents, which included the ability to reveal events happening hundreds of miles away was the power to entertain the magician with all manner of poetry, music, singing, dancing, comedies, and dramas. Some of the more dangerous spirits could even show visions of naked people doing well things naked people do. Oh, what people did to amuse themselves before television. Let's face it, TV, or in this particular case, your handy dandy super tape recorder. Let's face it, TV is a medieval magician's dream come true. A magic mirror that informs, entertains, and if we're not careful, enchants. Ancient wizards constantly ran the risk of the spirit gaining the upper hand and becoming master rather than the slave. So it is with television. Be honest. How many hours a week does your TV vampire suck from your life? Isn't it time you took, a, took back a little of that control? I have to confess that the idea of 
TV roulette omancy was meant to be a just for fun experiment for one of our Monday night magic classes on divination. It was fun, all right, but is also surprisingly effective. Once we all got into the swing of using the remote properly, audible answers to our questions poured from the television with ruthless hilarity and clarity. If you have a television and a remote, I encourage you to try this for yourself. When you think about it, a remote control even looks magical. So does your tape recorder. It's smooth and black, covered in soft rubbery buttons, labeled with numbers and geometric symbols and words like power and mute. Some manufacturers even call it a wand. Couch potato method is very simple. Make sure the remote control is programmed so that an active channel appears with every flip as you move either forward or backwards through the channel selections. You may, if you wish, include one blank channel to represent no or nothing or try again. Using the remote, mute the volume on the television. Make sure you can find both the channel select and the mute buttons with your eyes closed. Use two hands if you have to. Close your eyes, ask your question aloud, start flipping. When the spirit moves, moves you, quickly press the mute button to activate the audio. Listen carefully to the first two or three seconds of sound. Press the mute button again and turn off the sound and consider for a moment what you heard. You only want to hear the tiniest of sound bites. While one word is often enough for your oracular answer, you may want to keep your eyes closed and repeat the process several times and string together the words you hear. Well, that's the couch potato uh, oracle that you use with a television. I don't know why I never thought of doing this before. And it's perhaps because uh, uh, for the better part of my life, everybody didn't have one of these in their pocket in order to do it. But anyway, uh, if that sounds like something that's fun to do, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and do it. If you're, if you're not, uh, uh, I, I'm suggesting that you start with, with uh, uh, the elemental, elemental spirits because they're already all around you. They're already part of your life. You're part of them. They're part of you. And, uh, uh, but any specific spirit in and of itself, uh, this could uh, at least theoretically be your opportunity to actually hear how they would communicate to you. Anyway, that's it for today. Continue to be good to yourself. Be good to your phone. <laughs> Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under wealth.